Magtech has maintained their high quality during the ammo panic and ramped production to the max. Their ammo is the only ammo I run on the range because of its performance and reliability. I recommend Magtech wholeheartedly. Failure is catastrophic. The RDS goes down, what happens? You got a cracked lens or the dot's gone, it just doesn't work, okay? So what do I want you to have? Both. <laughs> I want you to have irons and, and the red dot. When you first start your initial assault upon the red dot, I like to say that because everybody says defeating their cover garment, so we're going to assault the red dot now. <laughs> Listen, if you've got to defeat your cover garment, you're wearing a weird shirt. Oh, let me go. <laughs> All right. We're going to assault the red dot by being able to see it, and you have already learned to line up sights, your brain is gonna recognize that at some level and help you guide it. When I first started shooting, I had people that come with a red dot and no sights on it and they really struggled. Some point it's recognizing. I was shooting a match and I drew the target and I was like, my red dot's messed up. I mean, it was that quick in my mind. So I shot it, I just said, I got nothing else, I gotta shoot the red dot right now. And it came back and it was all alphas. And I was like, huh. And then I looked down at my gun, my backside had slidden over, so my mind had recognized that something was out of place, therefore it had alerted me, it didn't know what it was. So it's an interesting bit of tidbit. There's a learning curve with irons in the beginning, right? How many of you can truly call your shots? I've been, I know he can. All right, anybody know what it means? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so where the sight lifts off the target, that's where the bullet's gonna go and you don't have to look at the target. All right, it's a very hard skill to teach people. N nigh impossible. It's almost the one percenter skill of, of calling true shots and really knowing it. And it takes a lot of practice and most people aren't very good at it. It is much easier to call a shot with the iron sights, uh, uh, with the red dots than it is with the iron sights. All right? But remember, no matter what system you pick up, skill it comes from struggle. If you don't struggle, you don't get skill. If it's easy, then you're not even close to your potential yet. Never in the history of teaching mixed martial arts did a dude walk in and go, I'm ready, and then take out my fighters. In fact, it's quite the opposite. He walked in, and his ego was crushed, and he may never come back again, especially the guys that came in for the challenge. We used to have a stack of waivers when I first started teaching at the front door for dudes to challenge us. My wife got so upset with the guy, she's like, she signaled me like this. She's like, come over here. It's like, what? She goes, take him in the cage. He's driving me crazy. Took dude in the cage, choked him out, woke him up. He's like, what happened? I said, you lost. He goes, give me another try. I'm gonna go real hard this time. Woke him up again. And he was like, damn. He goes, I'll be back tomorrow for lessons. Never saw him again, but my wife is like this. Nice, I like that, that's fun. Here's something I see in the fire industry is we teach from personality sometimes instead of principle. I like this, therefore you should like this. But personality doesn't scale. Because Bob Vogel can grip a gun in a very unusual way does not mean you can. But what does scale is biochemical reactions, physiology, and psychology because we are all made from the same escape artist. You're here because your great, great, great grandparents made great decisions. They didn't play with rattlesnakes. They didn't let tigers eat them. They didn't fall off the cliff. They didn't eat poisonous berries. They didn't sleep with Ch Chief Hugaboom's daughter, all right? You made good decisions, therefore they procreated and you got here. But somehow, people think they're all civilized now and that doesn't exist anymore and it's utter nonsense. If I made you go without meals for nine, just nine meals and your kids were crying, you would be a different animal. You would change completely. And if I put you in a group of people, it will absolve responsibility and you'll do things that you thought never were possible. Because we're not that civilized. It's a veneer. That means a finish on the front. So can we not use that to be better fighters, better warriors, better shooters? Absolutely. Here's what every coach needs to train. Technical. Not because it's at the top of the triangle, it's just one of them. Psychological. How you think about your self-image is incredibly important. Physiological. How do you act under stress and how do you manage it? What do most people concentrate on though? Technical. And then when you get under pressure, what do you do? You're not really sure because you haven't entered that stage. That's what's interesting about what I do for a living because as mixed martial artists, we die all the time. We get knocked unconscious, we get choked out, we get our arms bent the wrong way, and then we live and we get to do it again. So we get to have battle after battle after battle. If you don't think it's hard to face a guy who's been training for eight weeks to kill you and lock yourself in a cage with him, you don't know what pressure is. And what my mind did every time is I'd walk into the cage and I'd look at the guy and he'd grow. I mean, my vision make him bigger. I was like, damn, that dude's big, you know? I was like, he's gonna kill me. Cause my mind was saying, what? Pay attention, idiot. And I was like, I, I'd look around and I was like, why the hell do I do this? What is wrong with me? 
And then we walk out, we touch gloves, and bam, it was on, and not another thought came into my mind until it was over. I just enjoyed the process there, you know? And then I look at tape, or video now, you know what he was? Same size as I was, because we have weight classes. But he looked ginormous, because my mind was telling me I'm gonna die, pay attention, dummy. And I use that to make me a better fighter. Fear is your friend. Fear is your companion. If you were fearless, you'd be psychotic, <laughs> which is not a good thing. You wouldn't learn lessons from bad things. So use your fear to empower you. My tagline is this, measure, refine, and perform. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna measure what you can do, we're gonna refine it, and then you're gonna perform it under pressure. If you don't do those three things, you'll never get corrections. Why don't people like to measure? Because they don't wanna know who they are. They wanna know who they think they are, but they don't wanna know who they really are. How many of you run a timer all the time? It's important, right? How many of you shoot drills that are scored? How many of you shoot matches? How many of you go to Jiu Jitsu or Muay Thai or something like that? All right, how many of you work in stressful jobs? You get measured no matter what you do, so you better get good at it. And hiding from it really is only hiding from yourself. Jerry Mikulik said this, whoever sees the quickest shoots the quickest. That man's brilliant. It's the truth, if I can see you and shoot, I can shoot you. But if I'm spending a lot of time accommodating and trying to line things up, then I can't shoot until I'm ready. So whoever sees the quickest. Masada Yub said this, uh, slow and fast have little to do with accuracy, but looking deeply does. I don't think you guys have a problem with this, but for the love of God, quit thinking you can choose either accuracy or speed. You cannot, all right? You know what you never heard a boxing coach say? Hey bro, slow your jab down, get him in, man. Get your hits with your jab, slow it down so you can get him in. It doesn't work that way. There's an allotted time in a fight and you get to shoot during that time. You don't get to do it slowly. Because if you take forever, he gets to do what? Start fighting. All right, if you do it fast and miss, what does he get to do? Start hitting you. So you've got to do both. And the idea that they don't exist together synergetically like my inbred cousins in the Appalachian Mountains, <laughs> nothing. Those are pretty good, right? All right, they live together, they work together. Where does speed and accuracy come together? In performance mode, under stress. And we have to learn how to program it to make it come out. Real quick thing about stereoscopic vision. Uh, it allows you to see around an obstacle without moving and it gives you depth. The reason people have a hard time shooting at distance that shoot at one eye. Anybody know somebody with just one eye? They're not very good drivers. They have a hard time shooting because they don't have depth perception like they used to, they lost peripheral vision. So as soon as you turn the eye off, like I spend a lot of time on scopes, I look through a scope, I don't squint this eye because it gives me a hell of a headache. I just turn it off. I don't pay attention, I can see the reticle. I just look at the reticle. My, this is the way your vision works guys, two signals and they have holes in them. Your brain takes it in, flips it around, and puts them on top of each other. That gives you depth perception, and it makes a guess at what it's seeing. Not perception is reality, it makes a guess at what it's seeing. All right, and if you don't program it to see what's ha what you think is happening, then what happens? You don't see anything. Who can do stereograms? You know what those are? You look at a thing, and you relax your eyes, and then you see the other thing inside of it. You can't do it, so you have a hard time relaxing. That's what it really says. You just don't let go very easily because you have to let the accommodation of your eyes go. So you do this. See what I did? Sure. You're like that. And that's what accommodation is. I'm holding my focal distance here. So everybody hold your finger out here. Look beyond your finger. Now bring your eyes to the finger. It takes time, right? But if I'm looking at the target and the dots on the target, I don't have to take that time. How many of you are 40 or above? It takes longer now. It's going to take longer and longer. So the red dot gives you an option. Okay. <laughs> longer. Longer. All right. Anastigmatism. Now, if you want to see poorly, do this or do this. You have no neurons to map there. Your visual cortex doesn't see well. Does it look like shooting, though? And I have a theory. I don't know if I can ever prove it. But I think people that wear ball caps and that like to drive their gun up as their head comes down, they create a scope. So what they do is they push their head down, push the gun up, and then lock their head into position. And when the gun hits the top of the hat in their vision, they stop. And that means they're looking through the least effective part of their eyes. The area right here is called the foveal vision, and that's where we focus and do fine work. Would you want to be seeing in a fine manner or a peripheral manner? Exactly. If you fought me like that, I would knock you out. You know why? Because your brain is not protected in that position. Is that important in a fight? <laughs> yeah, it is. If you stick your neck out like this and take your chin out of it, yeah, and then I hit you, you go to sleep because your neck's going to rack. Sure. Guys that are really strong, they do this. They make a spring. 
and then I can see better, and then I can move better. You can move forward probably better, not, not backwards, right, or left. It also reduces perceptual visual load, and front sight focus is tiring. Anybody taking a long class and you start having problems with your eyes? I have shared dominance, so they'll switch, which is a real problem with iron sights, because I get two targets or two back sights. So like Drunk Doc Holiday, I shoot the one on the right. <laughs> I just guess. Processing is improved with the red dot. Who got a 4K TV lately? It doesn't look real, does it? Looks like Telemundo. And you're like, man, Lawrence Fishburne got bad skin. You know, you see things you've never seen because you're getting more processing. But after you watch it for three months, what happens? You look at an old TV, you're like, how the hell did I watch that thing? Now, are you telling me your eyes changed or your processing power changed? Your processing power changed. And this is probably the most important part. Near sight focus may be overridden with a fight or flight response. You just may not be able to see the front sight. A lot of officer-involved shootings, they are always asked, did you see the front sight? And they're unsure. Now, they may have aligned it in unconscious competence, but they may not have seen it. That's a different thing. So if we know we're going to look at the target, it would be best to just take advantage of that already and be looking at the target.